Welcome to this quick training video on how to use Datalink Timer. Datalink Timer is a web application that will allow you to create on-screen countdown timers. So the way that you would uh, get this application installed is you'd first click on the Datalink Timer button to download the software. Uh, the zip file that you get, you'll take to your TriCaster, you will unzip it, install it, and then it will place the appropriate files on your TriCaster. Uh, after that, we're going to open up the uh, application through a web browser on a, any machine that's on the local network. Now, there is a piece of information you'll need. You'll need to know the IP or computer name of your TriCaster. And if you don't know that information, you can just go to your TriCaster, click the globe in the upper right corner of the interface, and you'll see the IP address here, 192.168.1.136. Uh, now that we have that information, we can go back to our other computer, I'll open a tab, and type in that IP address. But before you type enter, you're going to type a slash, and then you're going to type the word timer, T-I-M-E-R, and hit enter. And this will open up the Datalink timer uh, web application. Now, there's basically three parts to this interface. The first is where you set the initial timer. So you can choose how many hours, minutes, and seconds you want it to have. Um, you can do things like a 90 minute countdown, so it doesn't have to be one hour and 30 minutes if you didn't want to, but uh, either way will work actually. You can also store and save these timers. So store and reset is just a temporary save. That way if you're using this timer maybe multiple times during an event, this could be a great way to just reset it over and over again. Load and save is to more do a permanent save of what the, uh, the timer is. So maybe if every day you're gonna be using this and when you open the app, you don't have to reset the timer over and over again, you can save it and then it will, the app will always load with the timer that you want. But it does default to a five minute timer when you first start it. Below that is the display settings and this is how it is going to display uh, in your system. So uh, right here where it says, uh, like you see it so shows uh, 0, 05 colon 00, zero. that's exactly how the timer will show up. And you can use these buttons down here to uh, choose how do you want the, uh, the timer to be displayed. So do you want, for example, hours is not displayed because it's zero and I have it, uh, don't have always display on. So when it's zero, it wouldn't be displayed. But if I did want it to display, I could turn that on. Um, there's also a pad digits option. Uh, this will make it so that uh, even when the timer is down to one digit, like, you know, nine to one, uh, will it put a zero in front of it? So if I had pad digits, you'll see you get that extra zero. So you can kind of choose that. Maybe I, for example, want a five minute countdown, but I don't want it to be zero five. I just want it to be five minutes and seconds. So I'm going to take the pad digits off and now I have five minutes and zero seconds. Below that are the triggers, and there's two ways you can trigger uh, data link timer to operate. The first is using just a completely manual method where you will hit the start, and then when, it, when you hit start, it will turn into a stop button, so you can use that to start and stop it manually. But you can also set up uh, data link timer to follow the status of a keyer inside the TriCaster. So if you wanted to, to do that, you would just tell it which uh, either the main or which ME and which keyer you want it to follow. And when that keyer is off, um, the, the timer won't run. But as soon as you turn the keyer on, the timer will start running. Now, by default, uh, if you leave it in the default settings and you just turn this first checkbox on, once the timer started, it will not stop even if you turn the keyer back off again. If you would like it to stop when the keyer is off, you can hit the pause timer when keyer is off and then it will start and stop as the status of the keyer starts and stops. So you could do that as well. <clears throat> you can also have the uh, macro trigger, uh, I'm sorry, the macro, the application trigger a macro when uh, the timer reaches zero. So if you would uh, want it to do that, I'll show you how to set that up here in uh, just a moment. So uh, the last thing we need, kind of need to do to make this all work though is we need to have a title that is going to display our timer on there. So we're going to go back into the TriCaster really quick. I'm going to go to a buffer. This could be in a graphics player or anything. I just, you know, uh, some place to load a title template. In buffer 11, I have a title template in here right now that just happens to say line one in it, but I would rather it display my countdown timer in there. So uh, I'll click in here and we'll just say time uh, left. And then to put in the data link uh, countdown timer, you're going to type a uh, percent. And then uh, you're going to type in the word or start to type in the word countdown. And there are actually four different variables the countdown timer is going to give you. One is countdown. That one is going to be the timer just as you see it in here with the 
hours, minutes, seconds, however it's currently set to display with the colons and everything in there. So if you just want the, in the entire timer, you would want countdown. Um, the other ones though, is you can have just the hours, the minutes, or the seconds by themselves um, uh, brought in as a data link variable as well. So depending on how you're building your title, you might want to use one or the other, probably in most cases, just the full countdown timer, which is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to select that and hit close. And you can now see that on the screen, uh, it shows time left five minutes. Now at this point, I'm just going to click start on the timer and you can see that the timer is now counting down. Now, if I wanted to run a macro when the timer hits zero, the way I would do that is go into my macro system. I would select a macro I want to use. Um, let's just use this one called test. I'm going to click a trigger in here. And then to assign that trigger while it's listening, you're going to go back into data link timer and you're going to press the set button. And when you do that, that will assign that trigger to the uh, command of net colon data link timer. And now uh, when this timer hits zero, if I have it checked and active in the application, um, it will then run whatever this macro is. Now, uh, do make sure that you uh, only have one macro assigned with this trigger at a time, because if there are more than one, it, it will run all of them. So that's probably not what you want in most cases. So just, you know, you can clear out a, a previous macro just by clicking the X there and it will erase that trigger and then you can reassign it to another one in there. So I hope you find uh, data link timer uh, useful and thank you.